Okay, welcome back to our uh, second hour on emotional wholeness. And today we're looking at um, uh, living daily with a renewed mind. We started off um, with understanding how important a renewed mind is for emotional wholeness. We looked briefly on a couple of scriptures on um, what it means to have a renewed mind. We were looking at different elements of the renewed mind and we spoke about reasoning. But before we get there, uh, there were, there were a, a couple of questions and I'd like to take uh, Louis' question first and then move into, uh, I think even uh, Anita had her arm up, so we'll, we'll hand up, so we will just focus on those questions. So Louis' question was, what distinguish distinguishes being in doubt from being in unbelief. Okay, um, uh, so, so to quickly, uh, I think, bring about those, uh, those differences, um, doubt and unbelief are, are, are not the same thing, and neither are they the opposite of each other. So doubt, as we, um, uh, as we, as, as we can explain, is, is we are not sure of what we believe in. You have faith, doubt is when someone does have faith, but it questions the belief or questions the faith. Whereas unbelief is a kind of a refusal to believe. That is, you're sure of your belief of something that you don't believe in. You're sure that you, it is not, uh, okay, this seems like a play on words, but it is sure of our belief of something you don't believe in. Whereas in doubt, you are sure, you're unsure, not sure of what you believe in. Now, doubt is often the, a predicament of a believer, but uh, unbelief is generally seen as the condition of an unbeliever. Uh, you would see that doubt is something that questions your faith. So you're in a search of knowing better to come to a place of belief, whereas um, uh, unbelief is being in complete blindness, is being in a place of resisting God and resisting the truth that is there. So in doubt, you're looking for reasons to come to a place of belief, whereas in unbelief, you're looking for, uh, looking for something not to believe, not to believe, which means you are in a place of unbelief and you're looking for things or you're adding up things to continue to remain in that place of unbelief. Whereas in, in doubt, you're looking for reasons to believe. And I think um, one of the biggest examples that we can look up is in Job and, um, you know, Job and his wife. And I just want to bring up that scripture in Job chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And I'll read that out. So his wife is saying to him, do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. So this is what Job's wife says is there is no point holding on to your faith because She's in a place of unbelief and says, you know, curse God and die. But he says to her, you speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his, with his lips. So you can see this difference uh, between Job and his wife who experienced uh, a severe uh, um, crisis in their life. Um, you know, they, that they lose their business, they lose his wealth, lose his children, the property and all, uh, all the house is being, everything kind of collapses. And um, what does suffering do for Job? It, it exposes God's love for God, even as he wrestled with, with, with why God would do that. And, you know, he wrestled with those, with those things. Um, but the same suffering exposed the unbelief of his wife and he says curse god and die so their response to that suffering revealed a lot about them that one of them um, came to a place of unbelief but however however job in his probably in his um, in his questions did come to it so we see that at the end you know of how uh, he comes to a place of absolute surrender to god so this is what um, they, so they're different from each other, 
one questions their own faith the other um uh, stands it is a condition they stand on that the fact of of their unbelief they stand that they 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 question the fact of uh, uh, believing their unbelief and it is a condition of the unbeliever and this is a struggle that the believer goes in uh, doubt i hope i answered that question louis um anita would you like to raise louis i hope that yes. answers okay sorry louis i'm not able to hear you if you could just put your message on chat that would be helpful uh anita yes you could go ahead with uh, yes no no uh, i was just thinking when you speak about reasoning the uh, ability what god has given us like uh, most of the babies born in the world and they are raised in the norms of the world like that so it's very difficult for you to like question against that like for example if we think about hindus or anybody is born out of christianity like uh, whatever uh, their parents have taught them they just take it as a like this is the way i have to live my life this is the truth for them maybe maybe there would be an inner voice which which like for many uh, in many cases of hindus it has happened like wherever the reasoning they have done and they could have that uh, answer they could search for the truth i i was i was just uh, when i look around so many hindus are around us and unless and until they question that within them that how are we able to worship these idols and uh, this mantras and uh, being uh, like under the of being fearful of their curses and uh, like asking for the blessing unless and until they reason it out they will not uh, ask for the true living god and mm -hmm. i will just uh, like I, i i i get a very uh, like concern like how would they will find that salvation in christ how would they find the truth okay so um uh, okay uh, so one thing that we can understand is the ability to reason is something that god gives each one of us uh, whether we are believers or unbelievers the ability to reason okay but the ability to understand and open our eyes to truth is something that comes from um from being like you said from be being having a willingness to to see to see something different and there i would uh, so when we look at and, and that comes from 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 wisdom also also understanding in wisdom you know having the spirit of wisdom and understanding which comes from the holy spirit that he in like we read in that scripture in ephesians right that he opens our eyes enlightens our eyes to understanding so that is something that comes from uh from the holy spirit right uh, and that's that's the prayer that we pray that in fact that very verse that ephesians um, 117 uh, is something that we that is a prayer that we pray for unbelievers you know that god would open their eyes of understanding so they will be enlightened to see the hope of their calling so what you're doing or what you what the question that you've brought up is yes we are to pray that their eyes eyes of understanding would open um but do they have reasoning yes our reasoning also and our ex uh, our understanding about how to do things also comes from our experience and comes from the learning and the knowledge that we attain so yes for for things that are needed for our regular day to day yes comes from from our experience and reasoning however a lot of things about the truth of of god's word comes from the spirit of wisdom from the spirit of knowledge which is the impartations of the holy spirit that the holy spirit opens our eyes uh, of understanding where uh, as a believer or as an unbeliever we need to keep our um, uh, our hearts open and teachable to the truth of god's word i hope that was yeah i, I think that was very similar yes, to what you were saying anita yes um, okay thank you all right so let's move on so we looked at the first element of reason <clears throat> excuse me now we're going to be looking at another element of the leading of the holy spirit now uh, we we are looking at how the leading of the holy spirit is something that can supersede our own reason our our 
our own reasoning. So as believers, um, each of us believers of Jesus Christ or believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are being led by the Holy Spirit. And we see that in John 14, that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be um, with us as a guarantee, as a seal. Um, and the and we do see um, that the, the power of the Holy Spirit works in us to guide us in everything that is in life, to guide us into truth, to guide us into wisdom, um, helps us to see things, um, that uh, um, to reveal things to our to us and also reminds us of the truth, reminds us of what the word is. And we see that uh, in scripture. When we look at John, we do see that there are things that, that the Holy Spirit moves us into doing. Okay. Some of the examples that we want to look at is, you know, when Jesus was walking this earth, when he was on the uh, earth, there are some things that he instructed his believe uh, his disciples to do uh, um, uh, he instructed people to do which was against even human reasoning which seemed quite contrary and opposite to to human reasoning and and there are a couple of things that are put down here and so let's probably look at that so what we're saying is these whatever jesus had instructed them to do may not have been logical or may not be something that is that could be commonly or naturally done or it's not something that will um that may um uh, sit in our reason very well or sitting in our logical minds very well and ask you know how does that happen how could i mean those are things that are that are uh, impossible to do. So let's look at a, some of the examples and we will unpack some of it here. So some of the things that we see is, um, you know, at the we wedding in Cana, um, Jesus asked them to fill the water pots with water. And when he draws and he, he, he just gives the instruction to the servants to draw that out and give it to the, to the guest of the, um, of the wedding. And we see that the water turns into wine, right? So just following that instruction, fill the water pots and draw it out and give it. So in your reasoning, you're saying, okay, you're filling it and then you're giving the same thing. What, how, how is it going to be any different? So it doesn't sit well with our uh, reasoning or it doesn't fit into our reasoning. Or the other example of where Jesus says, you know, throw uh, uh, move out, go into the sea, uh, throw throw your uh, nets out for a catch. And you see, you know, the disciples didn't find a catch at all. But then, you know, when they actually go get the catch on the other side, they do find, you know, it teeming with fish. And in when Peter says, Lord, we've done this. We did this uh, through, through and through, but then nothing has, seems to have worked. So the instruction, again, doesn't fit into the reason. But there is a part of obedience that you see uh, in any of these things that we're talking about, a part of obedience that actually brings about you know, miracles, it brings about those signs. Or, uh, you know, while, while feeding the 5,000, Jesus tells the disciples, get them to sit down. And he takes the little that he has, that is, that is uh, given by a boy, that is those five loaves and two fish, and begins and, you know, prays over it, and they begin to start distributing. So initially, there is just those five loaves and two fish. But as they distribute, it begins to multiply so much so that there are 12 baskets that are left left behind that uh, left behind after after the distribution and there are just 5000 men that are fed and there are so many more so again no reasoning right there is those five loaves two two fish and it's fed a multitude and this is not just recorded once but it's recorded twice um you know where jesus feeds the 4000 with with seven loaves so here again you know there is no reasoning to this the next one is where to be able to pay taxes. Jesus says, go to the sea, throw your fishing line, and the first fish that you catch will have a coin in its mouth. Go pay your tax. Again, how is that possible? Am I catching the right fish? Have I fi fished on the right side? You know, uh, what if it's not there? You know, all of those reasoning, how would it be there in this fish? This reasoning can surpass the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, sorry, the leading of the Holy Spirit surpasses our reasoning. The next is when he tells Peter to walk on water. Is it possible? You know, your reasoning says it's not something that is possible. You will drown. In the, uh, you know, when you walk on water in the middle of a storm, you are definitely going to going to drown. So you, we see that these instructions um, would definitely not be logical. 
okay it's not something that fits into the reason but here is where we say when we're saying the leading of the holy spirit our reasoning always should be subject should be in submission to the holy spirit you know even though when we know fully well that these instructions or things things that the holy spirit leads us to do may be beyond our reason but we obey because because the holy spirit has led us into a specific instruction and when we've acted upon it we've seen the result of it and and i'm sure that you know each of us may have significant examples for this and i want to spend some time opening it out to uh, for for some of you just to encourage one another maybe you've had something that you've been asked to do without reasoning like i remember you know way back uh, um, you know in my early times of of uh, of earning um i had very little um in a particular month but then there was an in, that i felt that god wanted me to bless somebody with something and i'm sure this is this is a common example for many people bless uh, somebody with something uh, just of sufficient that i had probably for my month's needs but then you know as i obeyed to do that there came so much more as um, you know that that was needed so it's not logical you say okay i just have 50 rupees or i have 50 um, uh, um you know 50 bucks in in my hand and i'm supposed to be giving that when i actually don't have a meal how is that going to be so our reasoning should be subject to the to the to in obedience to the holy spirit so uh, yeah, maybe i just want to stop and just maybe hear some testimonies of this and i'm sure there may be a few of us who have at least one or two but i want to encourage you to bring it out because it will help not no it will help us and all of us who are listening you know and learning from this to to remember that always our reasoning uh, needs to be subject needs to be under the the supervision under the 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 leading of the holy spirit so quickly just a couple of testimonies if anybody would like to share quickly if you could quickly unmute and share nobody that's very hard for me to believe i'm sure there's at least one or two where you see that you know you've done something against your reasoning and you've seen just how the power of the holy spirit has worked no i'm sorry i missed the question uh, i just went okay. to open the door and i <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so my question was any testimonies on on how the holy spirit has led you far against your own reasoning you know maybe your reasoning your mind told you that's impossible god you know i can't do this this is impossible but then when you did obey you did find that um that it gave rise to some miracle gave rise to something much much higher and greater that's that's the that's the question so it's it's a testimony it's a testimony that and if you have experienced this to be able to share it so that we could encourage one another Uh, yes pastor i i want to share go ahead prabhakar okay uh it was like just last year during the covid time uh i was admitted and my oxygen levels were dropped too much can, can you hear me my voice is yes, my yes. voice is audible yes 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 so yeah yeah so i i was admitted to the hospital um, due to the my my oxygen levels were very dropping down and i was in very critical condition i was fighting for the battle of my life so during that time when i was admitted to the hospital i saw at uh, the very first day i saw two people uh, died i mean beside beside my bed they were I just this died out of oxygen they ran out, ran out of oxygen and then they died so um during the those time I, it was very difficult because uh, the moment i joined i was alone all alone for a couple of days later my wife joined me but couple of days i was all alone and i was seeing people dying just beside me so uh, 
as being a human like sometimes we get weird off so i was thinking that i won't be able to make it out and i'm just counting my days on so um literally i i was thinking but i was uh, but but the whole spirit was keep guiding me do not do not worry do not worry god god is uh, god is uh, going to heal you and take you out and you will be a great testimony so um whatever the medicines are uh, you know they are using on me uh, it was like null and qualified because uh, nothing going on my way so on the second 7th of may uh, morning around 10 am um, i was on my wheelchair uh, with the uh, oxygen mask was put on and i was uh, even unable to breathe for more than 30 seconds i was i was totally on the oxygen support completely my my lungs are totally infected uh, around 90% of my lungs were infected so uh more th- not more than 30 seconds i was able to breathe on my own i was completely on the support of oxygen so uh, seventh morning uh i i wanted to go to washroom and my wife uh, took me to that uh, so when i have to go inside i have to take my uh, oxygen mask off so i i did that and as soon as i enter uh, and i was you know freshing up my my oxygen level start dipping again and i was unable to breathe i was completely choked for um almost uh, a minute later i i felt that i am unable to breathe and i'm unable to breathe out and exhale in inhale it was totally blank out and totally choked and uh, i i i i believe that uh, this is my last 30 seconds i have so in that 30 seconds like i don't know how i managed to pull off but i i i remember the verse that holy spirit prays on her behalf when we are unable to you know pray holy spirit pulls on so those 30 seconds um, i remember a prayer come out from my interior because i am unable to speak so i was hearing the prayer uh, inside that god if it is you who called me for your ministry and if you want me to continue please give me a chance and if you want if if it is your will so i'm ready i'm 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 submitting myself to you and uh, during that time all my family members and everything uh, the memory just flashed on and during that moment when i, I pray i i thought i'm finished i'm done like then at the, <laughs> that very moment someone you know pulled me and uh, made me stand on my own feet and uh, uh, i feel someone is uh, oozing out the uh, you know uh, oxygen in my nostrils uh, i i felt that someone someone given me the oxygen in my in my lungs and that was something supernatural so something supernatural which i was unable so then i regained my into my consciousness and i was for 5 minutes i was like on my own and uh, i don't need any oxygen support like that i felt and, and then then i came out and uh, you know then later i again put on my oxygen mask and then went to my bed and i started weeping because I, at that very moment i saw the power of holy spirit who was continuously telling me nothing going to happen you because god is uh, surrounded you so that moment i believe that yes uh, god is with me and i am able to pull off and then after a month later i discharged and now uh, i'm very well on uh, doing ministry and it's all God's grace and that is something spectacular a miracle happened in my life so I always believe and then my uh, you know believe become more strong and um, and thank you thank you for the opportunity pastor all glory thank to you God. thank you thank you so much thank you for sharing that uh, Rebecca thank you okay uh, yeah all right great so yeah so we were saying that how uh, you know our uh, uh, the Holy Spirit can supersede our reason. We may not understand things, but when we walk in obedience, when we walk in faith, we do see miracles happen. So that, yes, we looked at the second element of our renewed mind, which is the presence of the the leading of the Holy Spirit. The third one is God's word. God's word with all the principles and promises. So we know that God has given us his word. Um, and that is the that is what we live by. So this brings us every promise and every principle of God, how he wants us to live. So as we continue to renew our mind, we also learn to live by the promises and principles of God. So we grow in faith and we, whatever we do is in submission to God's word. Okay? So that is, that is part of the re- renewed mind, that whatever we do, however we live, is 
uh, uh, we go back to God's word. We look back at His promises and His principles. Okay, um, I think some of some of the so so what we're going to look at is how the renewed mind, the renewed mind is where we are able to use the reason that God has given unto us in alignment and in submission and subjection to the word of God and to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So this is what we're saying. Yes, the renewed mind is there, but our, uh, uh, sorry, our, our reasoning is there, and that is always in subjection to the Holy Spirit as well as to God's word. Now, what happens when there are situations when you don't have a specific leading from the Holy Spirit or there isn't a specific word in scripture? You know, maybe those decisions that you make, make on a daily, daily basis, something that you need to do on a regular basis, like, for example, which course should I go for? OK, there isn't a verse in a Bible or a scripture that tells you you must do this or you must work through this. OK, and that's where, you know, from what God's put in your heart, you walk in reason. You walk, you walk with reason on what God God has God has given you like for example some some of some of the similar things you know what am I going to maybe a, what vehicle am I going to buy am I going to buy a bike or am I going to buy a cycle or am I going to buy a car you know it all that you need to know is you you reason out and say okay, I've got to go to work from here to there every day and that God's given you that reason there isn't a, a scripture or a verse that says but you know you follow your reasoning that God has God has given you so your reasoning is given to you to to help you live in this word while you continue being conscious and understanding and knowing and mindful of what God's word says and always being uh, yoked with, with what the Holy Spirit. Now, what happens when you keep aside reasoning? When you keep aside reasoning, like we said, there, there, are, there are points that you could get into severe trouble. Now, one of the examples that's that's put here is now, what does God's word say about our safety? He says his angels charge, he gives his angels charge over us to protect us in all our ways. So let's say you're, you're, you know, you're going for a mountaineering or you're going to, to trek and, you know, you want to get up to the other side of the mountain. You can't just, you know, fling your hands and, 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 uh, you, uh, throw yourself out from a mountain right you need to use your wisdom that you know you exercise your reasoning that if you don't do that if you do that you will fall and you will probably die you're going to break a couple of bones and probably you, you'd be dead in itself you would you would hurt yourself okay just because there is something that is in God's word, a promise in God's word, you don't test it. You're not testing it. You cannot abandon your reason. So your renewed mind is able to, it should be able to reason something and keep it in subjection to God's word and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And and that's how you exercise your faith. So whatever, that there are things that God's put forth to you and you don't test it. You're not testing it, uh, keeping aside your reason. But however, when it when it when it comes to being the Holy Spirit, you ensure that you keep yourself in subjection. So that there may be times that you may need to um, uh, trust the Lord, and and that we're going back to a scripture that tells us to trust the Lord. Proverbs three five six: Trust the Lord, um, and not on your own understanding. And when we are in a place of trust, is how we do see there are signs and there are wonders and miracles that happen and how we bring about and we see the supernatural taking place when we learn to subject our reasoning to God and uh, and and we are following what God wants us to do uh, according to his word according to the instruction of the holy spirit uh, you know that that's where we do find that we flow in the supernatural especially when you know when when we are flowing even in, even in the prophetic knowing that you are aligned to God's word, uh, sensing a leading of the Holy Spirit, maybe maybe giving out a prophetic word that may, may not be in a place of reason, you know? That's where you, when you stand in obedience to that is where you would see um, the miracles of God. Okay, when now to be able to act on God's word, to act on, on the written word, like, um, like it says in Luke 6.38, when you act on the written word and you give, knowing that you know god has promised that in his word things will be given back to you like uh, scripture says you know uh, be generous in your giving give 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 away so when you act in faith like the example i was bringing up when you act in faith on the word of god 
that's when the power of God comes into operation. Or let's say when somebody is sick, when you pray the prayer of faith, when you anoint somebody with oil, when you speak the word of God, God will cause that word to be fulfilled in your life. So there is, there is something that you act on. Now, when it is there in God's word, you act on, on the word, putting about, about your faith and keeping your reasoning in subjection. Okay. Uh, some of the examples that we want to want to look at in scripture is, uh, you know, in on individuals like Noah and the individual of uh, uh, and the person of Abraham. So Noah was given an instruction. What was he asked to do? He was asked to build an ark, even though there wasn't any sign of rain or any sign of flood. In fact, you know, they, that was the first time that it rained at the time of the flood is when it rained. So they probably didn't even have a concept of rain. But Noah was the one, despite not even seeing um, the material element of rain, went about to build an ark because of how God instructed him. To, uh, what God instructed him to do, or even in the in Abraham's case, we see that God had asked him to go out to another place, to another country, where God would show him. And all he did is he just packed his bag, obeyed, and went um, without really having you know GPS and uh, and Google to show him the way. He just went out without having any de any any details of it. In these in these cases, we see uh, how it is by faith by faith that they followed that instruction, keeping aside every kind of reasoning. We see that written in, in uh, Hebrews 11, 7 to 8. And I'm just going to read that. It says, by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, something that was never seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the, righteous, uh, of the righteousness, which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out in the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he, would, and he went out not knowing where he was going. So you see that there was no reasoning to either of this, but because of what they were divinely shown or called, they, used, they, they went ahead. So just like this, we, use, we need to use our reason, but we use our reason to correctly ensure that we are doing what God wants us to do with the word of God in mind and being sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yet, we must also see that our reason does not um, stand in the midst of our acting on God's word or the leading of the Holy Spirit. So the renewed mind is where we are able to use our reasoning both in alignment and in subjection to, to God's word. So even as we are uh, you know, on the topic of this, to be able to accurately assess and, uh, and uh, assess and understand and really test what we, what we hear, uh, you know, as, as in the part of how we hear sermons or how we hear preachers, because there's so much of material that is there that is given to us so easily. And all of us get to, you know, uh, either read books or we are able to see Google uh, YouTube videos or, you know, have so much of access to, uh, to, uh, to sermons and to scriptures and, and interpretation of scriptures. Well, well, well that it, it is good in one way, it definitely uh, uh, it is important that we do test, we, we rightly divide what we are hearing, what is it that we are hearing. So it is, it's not, it's not just enough to, to highly respect the person you're hearing from, but you know, you need to base it upon God's truth and to see um, whether it aligns with God's word like the um, the early church did in Acts 17, 11, you know, you would see that that um, uh, they, I just read that verse, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, is that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. So they searched the scriptures. So whatever we hear, we must test it with the word. Okay, and we do see that um, often, uh, a, a lot of people do not take time to personally read and study the scriptures, but it is taken from what they hear without testing what is what is uh, what is spoken. And this is what renewing mind really means. It is to be able to take on what is being thrown at you, is what is 
what you are a consumer of and put it in um, in line, in alignment or in context of what you are reading and examine to see whether that is the truth or not. Okay, so that's become, that's the, that's, that's what we're looking at, the interplay of the reasoning of the, um, of uh, the word of, uh, word of God, as well as the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, one part of it that we need to understand is um, presumption. What do we mean by the word presumption? When, when we look at presumption, we understand presumption is to mean that we take on something or we believe in something or we assume that something is right or is true when it actually isn't. Okay, And uh, presumptions often uh, is something that can uh, that 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 happens in different ways in a believer. So presumption is something that you're assuming. You're assuming that something is true when it actually is not. Like one example of uh, presumption is when you assume you have heard a specific uh, instruction from God, but when when you actually have not, you assume that you have heard something from God when it when it isn't. Like. You know, you assume that God is leading you to um, uh, to to maybe marry somebody or to to move away from a, a certain job to another job, just ensuring and just believing that God will provide. If God has not spoken to you, but you are acting out of presumption, the outcome is very it can be painful. So you need to be able to be in a place of discerning what God says. So if we don't do that, we are in a place of presumption. Or the second one is when we misapply what a verse of scripture assumes or something that is written and something that you that you assume that again, you misapply scripture and feel that that's what uh, God wants you to do. And there is an example that's given in your notes about back in the uh, 1980s, about four young men, a missionary, missionary men, who God was using, and they wanted to reach um, uh, villages with the gospel. And they, uh, in uh, at the place that they were, in, they had to cross a river, a, a very turbulent river, to uh, to cross over. And these men presumed that they will walk on water, just like how Jesus and Peter did. Since you know they were serving God and they were going to preach the gospel, they felt that what they were doing was the right thing. And we. And uh, the outcome of it was that all of them, you know, stepped into the water and they were, were they they drowned. All four of them actually drowned. So how do we ensure that we uh, keep ourselves from from this thing of presumption? Is one like we said is to be able to test all things, test all things by the word, test all things, you know, by 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 uh, by seeking God in prayer testing, testing things, whether it is something that he has called us to do. The next is to be able to get wisdom, to get that godly counsel, um, you know, talking this out over with others uh, who are in godly positions, experiential positions of of um, um, of leadership, um, and those who, who are godly find out, you know, is that the right thing to do? Then waiting, waiting for a couple of confirmations or witnesses to see whether you know this has been corroborated uh, uh, through others or through other means you know you may you may see it see it in the word you may see it uh, another person doing for you maybe you know someone gives you a prophetic word and that kind of becomes a confirmation confirmation to you and also to be so how do you how do you safeguard against presumption is by uh, being keen to listen to the smaller things smaller things uh, that God leads us into, you know, small, small things of, and, and being may even maybe those small things of, you know, you, your, you a sense in your spirit, a leading of your Holy of the spirit to call somebody, you know, maybe just to pray for them, you know, take on, learn, learn from that. And, you know, yes, there may be times that you're mistaken or you may be, you may be saying a word to someone which, uh, which probably isn't accurate. Okay. You learn from that m mistake before you can actually listen to the big things. So safeguard, being able to safeguard against those presumptions. Now, what happens when we move or when we, when we, um, act upon those presumptions, it can definitely lead to a place of being confused. Or it can move us to a place of actually believing something that is not there, leading us to something that is like a delusion. A delusion is having an irrational belief. 
okay? And it moves us into a place of error. And what happens uh, and why that happens is because we have not done this bit of safeguarding ourselves and we can end up when we go into presumption can definitely end up in a lot of problems um, because we have presumed something. Once we do recognize that we have presumed something, what do we need to do is we need to uh, come to a place of accepting that we have, we have followed something that is wrong and we have walked in presumption and accept and that responsibility and um, coming to a place of being humble enough to work through some of those changes to say that we have made a mistake and come out of that place of presumption um, and work on work on what is true okay so one is to recognize that we've been in a place of presumption, even, even coming to a place of repentance, that we've walked on that assumption and that presumption and being willing to come out to make those changes, to humble ourselves to come uh, make those changes. An important part of, um, uh, of this is for us to know that, you know, even as we are dealing with people, we need to be encouraging and supportive to people who may have made presumptuous mistakes. You know, even some of us uh, in fact even david talks about it in the scripture you know um, keep me away from presumptuous sins okay things that i think that may be right but i may be walking into so so all of us um, could make those mistakes even as we are learning to uh, to walk in faith to walk in in god's leading and walk in the word so we need to be not just patient uh, um, to ourselves but also patient and supportive to those who've made those mistakes um, of doing so, okay? So through this lesson, these are some of the things that we've learned that yes, walking with a renewed mind means taking on the thoughts of God, walking with a renewed mind is taking on the on the attitudes of Christ, walking in with a renewed mind is to come in the knowledge of God. And how do we do that? We, we do see that there is an interplay of our reasoning, of the leading of the Holy Spirit, as well as God's word, being careful of presumption sin. So also to know when we're looking at uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit, we, are, we also need to be keen to hear the voice and the inner witness of the Spirit. And if you are, um, you know, we, do, we won't have time to really discuss this part of it. How do we hear the voice of God? How do we, how do we follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit? There is a publication called Receiving God's Guidance that is available for download on the APC website. Uh, for those of you who are interested, you could go through that and, you know, study that material a lot more to see how do I, how can I, what, what are the different ways that the Holy Spirit guides or, or the, or, a guidance happens. How how can I be uh, more tuned to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit? There is that ex extra material that you can look into for your own personal and further study. Okay. Um, uh, can can is there any questions that I can take up at this point of time? I'd be open for any questions or any um, uh, any thoughts. We have around two three minutes. Nobody? Okay. Then maybe we could just close with a word of prayer. Uh, can I request somebody to pray? Somebody who hasn't prayed uh, or hasn't even spoken in a really long while. Um, Siddhant, Siddhant, would you like to close with a word of prayer? Siddhant, Subhajit, all the S's. Salome, anybody? Could we close with a word of prayer? Okay. Uh, Sissy, would you like to close with a word of prayer? Does this happen in every class that nobody comes forward? Dear God, we submit ourselves to you. Thank you, Lord, for 
helping in our understanding, O Lord. Bless Pastor and bless all who have joined today and who have not been able to join today. Lord, we submit ourselves to you so that we will understand what you need us to know and walk in your ways, O Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for your abundant blessing in our life. Mm. The love that you have for us and let us be faithful to that love you have shown to us. We submit all our needs into your hands. Be with us as we disperse from this meeting. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sissy. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, we will meet next week. Uh, have a blessed week ahead. Blessed time of worship tomorrow. And a blessed Resurrection Sunday. God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.